got to a place where I felt like I was hopeless and that nothing was ever going to be better for me and that the pain wasn't worth dealing with every day. When they said my wife would never walk again, that was extremely difficult for both of us. We didn't really know where to go from there. I had spent 10 years looking for some form of treatment which wasn't available in Australia. We wanted to be a normal family again and be able to do things together. I was raised by a chiropractic father who very early on taught me a love for caring about people, healing people, but I think most importantly he taught me that it's not the 8 out of 10 people that you help that keep you going, but you really become obsessed uh, with the 2 out of 10 people that you cannot help. I have CRPS, I've had it eight years, and I'm here because it's the first place that I found that offers hope for an incurable disease. I was told for many years that I just had to live like this and survive like this. I've traveled the country seeing other doctors and nobody was able to offer me any permanent solution. I was okay with um, the diagnosis EDS, because I just thought it was over flexible joints, but then the pain started getting worse and worse. I went to so many doctors and it was all the same things that they would tell me they just didn't ever seem to have the right answer. The system that these patients currently face in the USA, but all across the world, is a system of symptom treating. So um, medically, what they try to do for these people is lower their pain, and that is done in various ways. To me, the body can heal itself from within, but that is not always a straightforward process. The OCRPS spread into my entire body. We researched it for a couple of years and trying to see how we could come here, and now we're here and we're Hoping for the best here. I've only been here three weeks. I haven't bent my leg in 10 years and I'm sitting here right now with my leg bent. I, I don't know how to explain this because um, I'm really new in this program, but the hope, the life it's already given back to me has been incredible. The research paid off. When you typically walk into a medical office, everyone is very isolated. You see one doctor about your GI tract, and you see another doctor about your brain and your nervous system. And you see a doctor about your joints, and you see a doctor to control your pain. And very few of these people ever sit around a round table and say, we truly love this patient, we care about this patient, let's compare notes, because we're treating a whole body, we're not just treating a body part. And so it is crucial that you treat the entire person and that you love the patient. Alrighty. You want this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I wouldn't know. Our treatment is focused on a base level, the central nervous system and normalizing that system, finding anything that interferes with it and removing it so that the body can heal from within. And because of that, it really doesn't matter if the patient suffers from complex regional pain syndrome or Ehlers-Danlos syndrome or POTS. Uh, it doesn't matter because we're not treating the symptom or the label, we're treating the patient in the central nervous system. We did some fundraising uh, to help me get here. But to be honest, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. Um, I knew that it was basically my last hope um, and that I should embrace every aspect of it, which I've done. And it's been the most incredible experience of my life. 
So I started out just using my own technique to uh, reactivate, to stimulate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is a nerve that runs through the jugular vein and the carotid artery that controls inflammation in the body. And it is such an important part of our nervous system and we're starting to touch on this nerve in rheumatoid arthritis research, all sorts of research where reactivating that nerve, waking it up, is massively beneficial to these chronic pain patients. My technique centered around uh, stimulating that nerve and repeating that process until it was doing its job again. So it, it was a simple process, but then trying to look for perfection, trying to lift my success rates, I started adding techniques. Today, I would say my most valuable tool and my greatest gift is the team that I have surrounded myself with. My family members are invaluable in this process. Uh, Dr. Honolly, Dr. Lucas bring such an important part to the table. But then my staff members are absolutely exceptional. Now a little bit more. Three, two, one, up. Come away. Each of us play our in, own integral part. I do the nutrition. We have our therapists that do very, very hard work, not only to physically support them, um, but emotionally and mentally support them along the way. My specialty in the clinic is working with the emotional stress. Uh, most of these people have huge emotional issues connected to their condition. And that is what I love to do and that's what I take care of. When I first got there, they said, we don't care what your label is, we're here to help you. They don't care that about the letters that the doctors had gave us, whether it's CRPS or EDS, they don't care what that is, they're here to help us. You know, one of the things that challenge um, for us and for many people when you go to a program like this that oftentimes insurance doesn't cover um, it, it's challenging. I, I look back and I remember that night that we decided to come down to the clinic in Arkansas. We were talking about this and talking with the staff. They told us how much it was going to be and I thought for a split second, wow. But then I thought, hold on. You can't put a value on you know, your child's life. From the time I first have contact with patients, whether they're at home or in the clinic, I want to let patients know that I understand that they haven't been believed, that they haven't been given hope before, and that I hear what they're saying and I understand what they're saying and that I believe them. When you walk into our doors, there's always laughter, sometimes there's tears, but there's this great sense of not being isolated anymore, not being alone anymore. It gives me great pleasure when I walk out to my waiting room and I've got someone from Wisconsin sitting, who's 60 maybe, sitting next to a 12 year old from Australia and they're becoming best friends because the thing they share in common is that they have survived excruciating daily pain. It's been the most incredible experience of my life to meet other people with CRPS, which I had never really done in Australia, but not only to meet them, but to meet other people with such a positive attitude toward the condition and toward treatment was incredible. Ready to go? Yeah. All right, come on back. Let's do it. End of the week session, eh? <laughs> yeah. Bring it on. Ready for the weekend. I've had patients from all over the world I found myself here because I enjoy helping people retain the quality of life. Doing very well, Melinda. All right, little by little, okay? Don't go big, start small and work it up. So seeing these patients, whether it be touching their toes, taking a run around the block here, that's, that's very important. And not only is it important for the patient, it's important for us here to see that our work is coming to fruition. We have been through hell and back, but we're here. We feel safe here, and we're going to beat this. And I cannot thank Dr. Katinka and her staff enough. I'm constantly looking to become better, to become more cutting edge, uh, to find new techniques, to find new methods, to find new equipment. Uh, I'm doing research about genetics to try to put all these puzzle pieces together so that eventually, hopefully, we can reach 100% uh, 
um, in my lifetime I'm certainly dedicated to try to get there. We don't have all of the pieces of the puzzle yet, but as far as I can tell, this is the best shot they have. When we ring our bell at the end of the treatment, we have a ceremony where patients walk up to a bell and they ring it if they've reached the level of healing that uh, they set out to reach. grateful that somebody gave her hope pretty much every day I look and go cow we're doing normal people stuff we're sleeping at night we're um, we haven't been to the emergency room in a year and we is, were there I mean that was our second home yeah we were you there know so we were there all the time other week easily every other week and I always love it when doctors say well that that's kind of voodoo medicine or that's not proven or anything and I say well I've got proof right here yeah. uh, you know they, they saved Emily's life. Dr. Katinka had hope for everybody. She never gave up on anybody and I really liked that. Had a lot of bumps in the road, but I never gave up. I never wavered from knowing that this is the place that I'm going to get well and I'm finally starting to see breakthroughs, which is life-changing. This place is so incredibly supportive um, and everyone here knows what you're going through, but to have my husband with me um, and I have him stand by my side through 10 years of hell and now have him watch me fight to get my life back is so incredibly amazing, not just for me, for us, for our marriage, for our family. And I, I just don't know how to, to thank her enough. And so I never promise a patient that we can help them. I promise them that we're going to try together and I will not leave a stone unturned trying to help them get their life back.